Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to my channel and possibly becoming a Patreon. Now this is a review of the Toolkit RC MC8. It is a multi-functional checker. Let me just see if I can focus on the box there. There we go. So let's uh, switch over to the overhead cam and take a closer look at it. The MC8 multifunctional checker was kindly supplied for review by Toolkit RC. Now let's take a closer look at the MC8. You can see there's the XT60 connector for the inputs and that's where we can put 7 to 35 volts. We come around this side, we, we have uh, a slider. Now this is used for your throttle when you're uh, outputting PPM signals. You've got your scroll wheel which you can click and rotate. We come around this side, we've got USB-C output and a normal USB output. And then we've got a connector for where we can put our servo connector onto and our eight cell balance uh, connector. Right, now let's plug this, let's plug this in. Okay, let's plug a battery into the unit now. And plug the balance lead in so we can take a look. And there we go. Now, if we want to now transfer that power to our USB, we just plug in. And that's now charging my mobile phone. And let's take a look at the options we've got on here. So if I do a short click, you can see we've got the cutoff voltage and we can change that. Uh, I would probably keep that 3.85. Then we can scroll so we can now measure or we can output. So if we go to measure, then we could, um, if we click, we can change this to measure PWM, PPM, or SBUS. So I'm going to go back to PWM. Now if we scroll and we go to output, we can click again and we can change this to be PPM or SBUS. Let's go to PPM. Now you can see, as I mentioned earlier, this slider will do channel 3, which they expect to be your, your throttle. Now, if you want to output uh, another signal, you've got to hold long press for at least two seconds. Now you can move down and click on, let's say, channel floor, four, and click. Now we can change that manually. You can see it moving. And you come back to. So, and then when you're finished, you click and come out. So that's, that's basically everything this little device does. So let's just on click and come back out again just long press there we go now we can come back and that's basically it that's uh, everything this little device does i've attached a servo to the mc8 so let's output the signal to it uh, we're going to roll measure output pwm and we should, there we go. So we're outputting a signal to this uh, connector to the servo. So that's how we would use it as a servo tester. And we can also, if we hold down the button and then click on manual, we can make it go automatically, two speeds, and then go back to manual again. So that's that demonstrated. Now let's take a look at what I feel is the primary function of the MC8 and that is to charge up say your mobile phone or your radio. So you are discharging the batteries that you didn't use when you were flying and then you put that energy back into your phone so you're not wasting it. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's plug the battery into the MC8. Okay. There we go, I've connected my phone up to the charger and we'll see how long it takes to drop the battery. This is a fully charged battery even though it's saying 4.1. Um, it was charged up actually a couple of days ago and it should have been, it should have been discharged. So I'm now charging up my, my phone and we'll see how long it takes to get down to 3.85 volts. The MC8 is now showing 3.872 and 3.878 
and 3.875 so I'm going to leave it running I think it's going to go down to about 3.7 and then it will just sort of stabilize and stop now it's put let me just check my notes my phone has been charged up by 17 percent which obviously would have been wasted energy if we hadn't have put it back into the phone so I think that's quite useful but once it's finished I will then do a cell check and use my multimeter to check the readings from the MC8 and then also uh, the readings of the actual battery. It's been 45 minutes and the voltage is now showing 3.84, 3.84, 3.84. Um, now with the other battery that I tested it does go down to about 3.7 but then it stabilizes and my phone which is an iPhone is now at 91 percent so that charged my phone up by 21 percent and that would have been lost energy if um, I had just discharged that battery so I think that's quite useful. I'll come back to this and we'll see what end voltages it stops at. Now so apologies for the noise because we get a lot of power blackouts in South Africa so my inverters um, working hard to power everything in the house anyway let's get back to this so you can see it's about one hour and 15 minutes after I started this test and when you can see we're at 3.8 now I think it's sort of stabilized at that there doesn't appear to be a buzzer that comes on and says you've completed the task I think it just it just stops and it's charged my phone up to 96 percent and I started at 70 so that's uh, 20 26 percent when I received the MC8 I needed to do a firmware upgrade and I did this and then that instigated me having to do a voltage calibration now I did that and you must do that when you update the firmware on a charger once I did that I used a 3800 milliamp hour battery to run the test so I'm going to put results up here. What I did, I took the readings at the end of the process from the MC8 and I, I took the readings with a multimeter so we could compare you know, roughly how accurate it is. Now, it took four hours for that 3,800 milliamp hour to charge two um, things. That was my phone and my power, power bank. Um, and you, know, you mustn't leave this unattended when it's doing this. But um, you could have it around the house in your lounge if you were watching television or whatever. And just to keep, but you just must keep an eye on it. I've been uh, holding back this review just for a couple of days because in the process of reviewing this item and testing it, I came across just a slight problem that the MC8 was not shutting down the USB when it got to the cutoff voltage. Now, I've got to give a, a shout out to Toolkit RC because I contacted them and they fixed it in one day and released a new version of the firmware which is version 1.02 uh, so I want to give a shout out to them that I reported this problem and they solved it yeah, uh, very very quickly so there is a, a newer version you'll see in the video I, I updated it with 1.01 .01, but there is 1.02 so I'm going to quickly show you how to do this because um, it, what, what was happening were, wasn't going to be dangerous because the, the voltage dropped right down but it, um, it wasn't cutting off the USB, but um, as I say, they dealt with it very quickly and it's now sorted out. So you should do this uh, up firmware version update to 1.02. Now let's have a quick look at the computer and I'll show you where to get the firmware from. Okay, dokey, right. So we need to go into toolkitrc.com MC8. We're then going to go to the, to the downloads, which I already have, and you'll see there's the new firmware, ver version 1.02. You click that and download it. Okay, so once we've downloaded it, we can then go to the folder, my downloads folder, and you can already see I've unzipped it. So double click the zip file, say extract all, and then you'll be ready to go. So if we open up the folder, you can now see we have the UPGA file. Uh, th this shows you the, um, the, the, the upgrade instructions on how to do it. And this is the, the update log. So if we double click that, you can see 1.2, fix the bug that cut off voltage USB cannot be turned off. Okay, so they, they, they dealt with it. As I said, this wasn't, when I was testing this, the uh, voltage dropped very slowly and it stopped. It, it appeared to be stopping uh, drawing current from the battery at the cutoff voltage, but it slowly, slowly went down. So they've dealt with that. So now to update it, all we need to do is we need to take the cable that come with our 
M M MC8 and plug it into our computer and you can see the drives appeared there now all we need to do is take the UPGA file and copy it take it over to here right click paste and now the the updating process is is happening so we just wait for the computer to uh, transfer the file to the MC8 there we go so we unplug the MC8 I'm just going to plug the MC8 into my power supply to check that the update happened so yeah 1.02 and there we go that's how you update the firmware and there we go there's my review of the MC8 multifunctional checker now getting on to the important bit would I buy it yes I would I would spend my money on this because I quite like the idea in this era now that we're in where with global warming etc um, and where we need to be more efficient with things I think this is great because sometimes you go to the flying field and it'll be too windy and you can't use your pack so at least you can now use this to charge up your 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 mobile phone you can use it to charge up any USB device uh, as I uh, in the video I use my power pack to charge it and from the 380 milliamp power battery it, ch it easily charged it fully which I think will charge my iPhone a, a couple of times so it, I, I like the idea of that obviously you've got all the other functionality with regard to the uh, PWM PMM and SBUS signals that you can input and output as well but to me the really important thing is to be able to recycle the energy inside my batteries when I don't use them obviously ideally you come back and you've flown all your packs but sometimes that doesn't happen so yes I would spend my own money purchasing this particular item thanks for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and if you didn't give it a thumbs down and if you have any comments or questions please leave them in the comment section below and if I've missed anything on the review of this item uh, please ask a question uh, below and I will try and answer it thanks for watching happy flying bye for now